Am I fighting faster? I think so. Okay. Well, this should be fun with all of this. This? Ew! I've o I only think, actually, I've had Varric kill Bartrand once. And I think that that was my first playthrough. Uh, this. I see you! I wasn't a big fan of the way that that turned out. And I think... When I saw it happen, like, when I saw the outcome of it in DAI, I think I always preferred the, um, we're gonna save Bartrand version of Eric. Because I think that there's just too much guilt that comes with that. Like, did I have to kill, like, did he have to kill Bartrand in that moment? Oh. Uh, uh, not yelled high town. Okay. Apparently we got the, uh, the base now. I like that that one's called Ladies Night Out. Um, but yeah, I think personally, for me, I prefer the, the version of Eric where he lets Bartrand live because I do think that the future events are probably a little bit less uh, taxing on him because he doesn't have to worry about whether or not he made a mistake with Bartrand. Oh my gosh! I just want to go home! That's it! Y'all, I'm trying to go home! I don't want to play with you! I know where your hideout is. Don't worry. I'll end you later. You hate me? Is that what they just said? Man, that double backstab me. I'll deal with this. Or I should say double dagger stab. Still so good. Still one of my favorite animations. Actually, there's, uh, in Swotor, there's one guy who actually has that ability, and it's not a normal class ability. I think it's just a literally this guy only boss fight kind of thing. And every single time I see it, I literally stare at him uh, and insanely jealous because I know, like, because I know, how, like, using it, how satisfying it is. I'm like, why? Why? I want to nice do that with two sabers. Okay. But... Let's see what my mail is. Is there anybody waiting at home for me too? You had luck on your travels. A new letter on your desk awaits your attention. Thank you. Hey, you okay, bud? Ah, uh, what a cute doggy. Who's a funny boy? You are. Yes, you are. Oh my gosh, I love you. Look at this dog. It's so cute. Now, we have a letter. Uh, I wanted to thank you for helping my brother. I worry about what the Templars will do to Karen, but it's what he wants. He's grateful that you defended him before Sir Colin. Thank you for most part. Oh, you're welcome. Mama? I've been wondering if I shouldn't remarry. What? I've seen how you and that elf look at each other. Huh? I'm sure the last thing you need is your mother watching over your shoulder every time you come home. But perhaps there is still life once your children have outgrown you. You want to, I just want you happy, Mom. You've been through a lot. You deserve any joy you can find. Thank you, love. No one could ever replace your father. But it is refreshing to think I could still be courted at this age. Okay. Mom, maybe don't get courted, though. Uh, Y'all, who's going to tell her? I can't. We can't. We can't do this. I have so much gold. Not. I wish you could order multiple. You cannot, but that's okay. Also, runes? No. Grenades! Did I make? No, okay. I didn't even realize you were right there. Oh, I thought I could pet you for some reason, and I can use the cook pot. <gasps> and even rum cake! Oh my gosh! Plus one humor. Um, oh. Yes. Fresh bread. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Navarre and Dragon Spice Tart? Not met. I, I'm very happy it's not made with real dragons. Like, I'm, I'm really happy uh, that we, we know that now. <laughs> I was literally looking at that going, huh? Okay, but we should now have, we have 58. Good, excellent, love that. Um, uh, books, didn't we already open that? 
Yeah, apparently. Yes, but I'm getting stuff still. Okay, so we have Varric, Anders, and then Aveline's thing. So let's get all of that done. And then, then I think we're going to do Night Terrors. I am not bringing Fenris to Night Terrors at all. <laughs> like, we are not. We are 100% not going down that road because I don't even want to chance anything uh, with him because we're so close to max approval. So then after we do that, what is this? After we do that, we're gonna, oh, we've got this stuff to like give back. We'll do prime suspect. Oh, and then we got to do this too at some point. So we'll probably, like, when we finish up Aveline's quest, um, I'll probably do the other thing with the Viscount and stuff like that. Which should work out relatively well, I hope. All right, let's first go talk to Varric. Because uh, he has something for us. I came by myself, by the way. Just because sometimes, if you've watched past episodes, you'll know. Sometimes I just, I like Hawk coming back by herself to talk to people. I don't know why. It's just a thing. You have got to hear this, Hawk. All right, what am I hearing, There's Varric? this tale making the rounds. They're saying you single-handedly fought off a pirate invasion at midnight on the sacred ground of the Chantry. Is that all? Wait, Varric, that's boring. Don't the stories mention my stunning good looks? What about my cunning wit? Nope, they skip straight to the part about the lovable dwarf with the gorgeous crossbow and the heart of gold. Wow. I try to steer them straight, but... You know how stories go. Just don't be surprised if people seem in awe. Okay. Well, that's... It is what it is. Why tell the stories? What compels you to spin these ridiculous tales? I love the sound of my own voice. And I'm a compulsive liar. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. It's just something I do. There's power in stories, though. That's all history is. The best tales, the ones that last. Might as well be mine. Honestly, he's not wrong. That's a really, really, really good Varric line. There is power in stories, and that's what history is. The best story wins kind of thing, and might as well be his, which is why he's the one telling your story. What do you get out of it, though? I find it hard to believe you're spreading these stories without getting something in return. Well, that just shows what you know, Hawk. The stories are their own reward. You really need to see the look on someone's face when I tell them you ripped the arms off an ogre. <laughs> Just once. <laughs> Why am I the hero, though? Why not you? Wouldn't it make more sense for you to be the main character in these tall tales of yours? There's a recipe to a good hero, Hawk. It's like alchemy. One part down to earth, one part selfless nobility, two parts crazy, and you season liberally with wild falsehoods. <laughs> You let that percolate through a good audience for a while, and when it's done, you've got your hero. <laughs> that was incredible. You are far too kind, Varric. I guess all works. A little reverence wouldn't hurt, though. You're beautiful, deadly, and hang out with fantastic dwarves. It would be a crime if people didn't talk about you. Anyway, I'll quit exaggerating before it goes to your head. No, you don't have to. Beric. But that's <sighs> fine. Fine. <sighs> I like it that it's almost like the original artwork. Because, like, if you remember in DAI, Solus had the artwork on his wall. But it's like it originally happened here. Because you've got what? Looks like Tojin. Um, the the Aeroshock. I don't know. Looks like a almost looks like a dark spawn or something or hmm i don't know what that is a ghost maybe a weird templar oh, it's interesting that he has all that on his walls okay now we gotta go talk to anders very busy we used to have another uh got things to do do uh, i i think that's uh kirkwall expanded that added the dwarf which is really cool anders dun dun and then we'll do aveline's quest I think. Is that what I decided? Oh, I got a few things to drop off too. Um, I think for like random quests, which we should go do. I don't know why I said random like that. Anders! What are you doing? Putting out milk. For? I miss having a cat around. 
But I think the refugees have scared them all off. Or maybe eaten them. Oh. You know, I've been meaning to thank you. For what? You don't need to stick your neck out for the mages here. But you have. One day, we'll make a world where your sister can be free again. Oh. Um. Yeah, it wasn't on purpose though. Don't get that idea about me. I'm really not trying to make a stand. I just keep ending up in these situations. I know. That's what makes it matter. You follow your convictions. When you still believed in me after what I did to that poor girl, I knew you meant it. You wouldn't say it just to make me feel better. You make me think I can really do this. Lead a revolution. Y'all, um, when did we make him feel like that? I, I don't, I don't feel like that's exactly how that conversation went. Not with Mari. Not, not with, not with my hawk. Y'all, I don't, I don't feel like she encouraged him at all. Um, you know, I guess that's what sarcasm will do to somebody. Encourage them. Was the circle that bad? Why does this matter so much to you? You saw Sir Auric's plan. How many Templars would prefer that every mage was a mindless, drooling babe? In the circle, they tell you day and night that magic is sin. A mark on your soul of the Maker's hatred. But for all the talk of demons, the most common death I saw for a mage was suicide. Mm. A revolution? I didn't realize you were planning anything that big. No small change would address the injustice that mages face. The Chantry itself must be overturned. There will always be mages born in Thedas. But Templars are made by men. And they can be unmade. <sighs> but... But... This 100% negates the lyrium addiction, the Chantry... I don't want to call it, like, brainwashing, but teachings. And stuff like that. Like... Mages will be born in Thetis, Templars are made by men. But it this completely negates why Templars were made. And this completely negates what they go through. And it's like, jo like, he's got such blinders on that you can see why he ends up where he ends up um, at the end of the day. However, you don't have small goals, do you? Why do none of my friends ever just want to be the best wallet player in Lowtown? <laughs> with the great hawk deign to associate with the best wallet player in Lowtown. Seriously, though, I couldn't do this without your support. I couldn't hold on to this spirit of vengeance inside me. But I know you won't let me lose myself to him. Um, you know, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, y'all. I feel like we walked into that and we weren't supposed to walk into what we walked into. Now, what do I have? Here we go. Is it just night terrors now? Side quest. Okay. Um, no. No. Yes. Oh. Due to a loss, but some holdouts cling. Okay. One true pantaloons and... Okay, so it's the... Let's get people. Um, do we want to do... You know what? Maybe we'll do the other thing first. I'm going to bring you. Oh my goodness. Who is a good idea? Okay. This might be dumb. Uh, Varric, already and I are like best friends. There's no way to, to fudge that up. I'm like undeniably best friends for life. Fenris and I not, we're, we're so close that I'm not, I got to go do night terrors. We have to go do night terrors. I don't know why I put off this quest for so long. Normally, it's like one of the first things I do in this chapter. I but like, the city is You're I just can't. Talented, Meryl. Oh, crud, they were talking. Sorry. I'm, I need one true. Oh, one true pantaloons. It's in high, you know what? Let's go to Lowtown. We'll do deliver the seal and then also do the uh, start that. And then we'll do the, I just like saying the word pantaloons. There's like a million other words I could say right there, but I just enjoy saying the word pantaloons. I don't know why. So I hear you've been visiting the Viscount's gardens, Daisy. What? Oh, they're enormous. And they're always empty. Why don't more people go to see them? 
Probably because they're private and surrounded by guards. Yeah. I thought all those men looked a bit cross. It's soil, honey, but that's fine. That's fine. Don't even. So, oh my goodness. Um, I <laughs> forgot we needed to see a merchant. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Glad we did this. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? I go to do the next thing and it's like, LOL, nice try. Um, yeah. Ornate amulet. Do we have, um, yeah, you can go. Mm. Yeah, I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of that. Uh, these. Basically, anything with only like one or two stats that are just basic at this point, we're good to go. Uh, blighted amulet. Oh, that's interesting. Life stack. Well, that one. Hmm. Eh. Okay. I think that's good for now. You have nothing. Oh, Raveline. Good. And we did that. Okay, I feel like we're a little bit better off now uh, than we normally are. Yay. Um, where am I? Okay, so they're both, they're both over here. Um, I could have done this an entirely different and better way. Like, I could have gone to see Anders first. Inside are always so cheerful, but I never know what to do in there. Drink? Meryl, it's a bar. I mean, tavern. <sighs> Wonder if it's time for but it's it could be time for your drink i mean it's only drink o'clock when you want it to be drink o'clock like i'm not gonna tell you who are you and even assassins zevrin wait can't be zev okay good yes hawk you won girlfriend here i still don't know what the big tree is for this is yours it's sort of pretty i suppose I thought this was lost to us, like so many other things. I Dalish doesn't like know what gratitude. the big tree is for, because the big tree is supposed to be like to help remember their roots. So it says a lot if if a Dalish doesn't know, because then it's like, well, was that actually part of it? But then the other thing that you could make the case on is that because the Dalish move around so much, while they try to remember the old ways, maybe there's some things that they didn't, but the alienage or city elves held on to more than the others, which is kind of an interesting thought. Um, some things they felt was more important than the other ones did and vice versa. So while city elves don't have um, Valisleen and stuff like that as much. Um, oh, actually, actually, I think this codex entry will explain it. There have always been alienages. They have been around for as long as elves and shems have lived in the same land. Ours isn't even the worst. They say that Valroyo has 10,000 elves living in a space no bigger than Denerim's market. Their walls are supposedly so high that daylight doesn't reach the Venadol until midday. Don't be so anxious to start tearing down the walls and picking fights with the guards. They keep out more than they keep in. We don't have to live here, you know. Sometimes a family gets a good break and they buy a house in the docks or the outskirts of town. If they're lucky, they come back to the alienage after the looters have burned their house down. The unlucky ones just go to the pauper's field. Here, we're among family. We look out for each other. Here we do what we can to remember the old ways. The flat ears who have gone out there, they're stuck. They'll never be human. And they've gone and thrown away being elven too. So where does that leave them? Nowhere. So yeah, this is the, the tree um, that they use. And it's just, I just find that interesting. Especially when you kind of hit other portions of DAI and you see how big the trees are. I'm um, like myth by Mythal's temple, stuff like that. Like it, it starts to bring up a few questions which we will talk about in Genevieve's <laughs> Let's Play, I'm sure. Do you want to be fed? I can't feed you, you cute, adorable burb. I was hoping you'd come. What's up? You did so much for my Fenriel already. I'm happy to help. I visited him among the people, but he turned me away. I know the demons still plague him. And now they've taken him. Who? Two days ago, Fenriel went into a nightmare and hasn't returned. Um, a nightmare? He can't be woken up. The Keeper says he is near death. His lips still fog a mirror, but that is all. Uh, well, uh, has anyone gone after him? Surely there are mages who can pursue him in the Fade. I have contacted Keeper Marathari. The Dalish have an ancient ritual that might help, but it requires someone Fainreal trusts to enter the Fade to free him. Okay. Uh, how can I help? 
This is hardly my area of expertise, but is there anything I can do? Marith Harry is coming to perform the ritual that will bring Fainriel back. His childhood things here will help anchor him. Perhaps this is something best left to the Circle. The Keeper will delve into the ancient magics to protect this half-breed. She wouldn't do so for me. I think that's interesting. I've already called for the Keeper. We need to begin the ritual as quickly as possible. Would you like to stay here or return when she arrives? Oh no, let's get this started. This is too urgent to delay. You have been far kinder than I had any right to expect. This cutscene was done so well. I like the music here. I feel like this song doesn't play enough in the game. go. Let's see what Marathari has to say. I came quickly, Ariani. I did not wish to tell you by letter how grave your son's situation is. The magic he possesses makes him what the Tevinters called Somniari, a dreamer. Dreamers have the power to control the beyond, what humans call the Fade. Fainreel is the first in two ages to survive. Mm. First to survive? Why are they so rare? Dreamers have great power in the Fade. They attract demons. Luckily, most prove too frail of mind to survive a demon's possession. A dreamer abomination would be near unstoppable. Uh, the Beyond? Is there a difference between the Beyond and the Fade? They are the same. By either name, the Fade is the realm of spirits, Thedas' heart. While the mortal realm is its strong arm. The demons who live there covet the bodies of mortals and seek to possess them. Only mages ever touch the Fade in a waking state. Others see it in dreams. Ah, uh, tell me about the ritual. What exactly are we going to do here? The elves of the Dales were experts in the Somniari arts. They could even help those with no power enter the Fade. I have done my best to recreate the ritual. We will use Fainreel's childhood home as a focus to draw him back through the veil. And then what do you mean by dreamer? What can a dreamer do? Dreamers are unique for their ability to enter the Fade at will, without the aid of Lyrium. In the Fade, they can shape dreams and even affect the world beyond the veil. Tevinter Somniari used to enter the minds of sleepers and slay them in their dreams. So, there's also a certain someone else that is a dreamer that we've met in DAI. And the interesting thing is that you can enter the mind of a sleeper, somebody sleeping, and slay them in their dreams. With Solus, though, you have the opportunity, if you have high enough friendship, to basically have a moment with him in the Fade. Uh, and depending on if you're obviously romancing him or not, we'll change it slightly. But it is waking in the Fade and you're in a dream, basically. And when you kind of come back to this and you listen to Marathari mention the fact that they, they can go in and they can just kill you like that in the fade um or like in your dream because that's what part of what dreamers can do it kind of shows how vulnerable you are as the inquisitor in that moment with solace and i find that to be really interesting and something i wish was kind of almost touched upon a little bit more because solace could have wiped you out in a heartbeat um and i kind of wish that scene had 
depending on if you are more antagonistic or not, because unfortunately that scene only plays if you are a high enough friendship level with him. But I do wish it had played no matter what. And then depending on your friendship level, dep depends on like how nightmarish it was, if that makes sense, because that would have been interesting. But let's start the ritual. Just send me into the Fade. I told you our courage was legendary. Now, Ariane, please excuse us. We must prepare. Oh, of course. There is more, I must tell you, that is not for her ears. There's always more, Marathari. I don't feel like I've ever encountered a situation where there isn't more. You're really not my type. This is a serious matter. I know! Fainreel cannot become an abomination. The destruction he would cause is unimaginable. If you cannot save him from the demons, you must kill him yourself. A death in the Fade will make him what your circle calls tranquil. He will be no threat after. Interesting. So a death in the Fade would turn him tranquil. So it's almost like, like we know how mages are made tranquil in this game or in this universe. But it almost makes you wonder if this is somehow where they got the idea from it. Like, is that what, um, like, in Tevinter, did they start experimenting with that? Or somebody else start experimenting with that and figure it out? And then that's how, you know what I mean? Like, it's just really interesting. I will not let him become a danger. I wish you luck. Now, gather a team and we will begin. Choose carefully, for all will face temptation. Can I come? I'd love to see the ritual. And I promise I, I won't be a bother. I can't imagine what aid I could offer in a realm of dreams and magic. I admit, I'm a little fascinated. Let us begin. In fact, the thing that let you bring a dwarf into the Fade is probably my favorite thing in the world because you shouldn't be able to, but because this is a different kind of circumstance, it works. Um, and Varix never dreamed before. Uh, so it's kind of cool that we get to do that. I actually think uh, DAO is also really interesting and DAI too, because as a dwarf, you also get to go into the fade multiple times, which is, is kind of cool. 